I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. Look, ASRock X470 Tai Chi. So as the name suggests, an ASRock motherboard, X470 chipset, which means it supports AMD second gen Horizon, which is exactly what's installed there. It's a Ryzen 7 2700X. Uh, I've swapped out these standard plastic hold downs for an air cooler and put in these fractal hold downs because I'll be using a liquid cooler in my testing. More accurately, I have used a liquid cooler. I'm going to show you some of that in a bit. And we have some G-Skill Sniper X memory, which, as I said in my uh, launch review of Ryzen 7, is interesting in that it's not Flare X because now AMD is actually supporting more mainstream memory and you don't need quite such dedicated DDR4 for the latest uh, Ryzen processor, which is a really good bit of news. So the PCB is actually shared by two uh, connected motherboards. So we've got this X470 Tai Chi. There is also an Ultimate version, a Tai Chi Ultimate. Apparently that's going to be about £250 in the UK. This is going to be about 210 So I wouldn't be surprised if this actually goes and sell a penny under 200 because it sounds better. Uh, so call this 200 Call that 250 for the Ultimate. The Ultimate has 10 gigabit Ethernet on the I.O. As I show you in a bit, there's a screened area where the Aquantia controller would go, but, on, but it doesn't exist on this board. And similarly down here, there's two blank areas where you would get power and reset buttons. Also note over here, there's some um, mast areas. So that's for a TPM header, for example. Who wants a TPM header? Not me. Uh, so this board is shared by a couple of related models, but this is the cheaper of the two, albeit uh, in terms of features, very, very similar. The styling is your standard Tai Chi black and silver. Uh, we've got the cog design on the chipset cooler, albeit it's a, a different cog to the one uh, I've seen previously, but it's all in the same ballpark. When I hold the board like that, you'll go, yeah, that's Tai Chi. You couldn't tell which chipset, which processor socket. There's not a chance. Not from that distance, but that's what this is. Taking a tour around the board, we have the VRM and their heat sinks. I'll show you that closer in a moment. We've got the four DDDR4 memory slots. Uh, up top, we've got an 8-pin and a 4-pin power connector for the CPU. Next to that, we have a chassis fan header. Over here, we have two CPU fan headers. Down the side there, we have the main 24-pin uh, to power the CPU. There we have what I think of still as a USB 3.0, but really as a USB 3.1 Gen 1, another fan header. There we have a USB 3.1 Gen 2, uh, which will typically power a Type-C on your front panel. There we have a laid-down USB 3.0 or 3.1 Gen 1, if you must. 8 SATA 6 gigabit. There we have the front panel connectors to connect to your case. Uh, that's a postcode uh, readout in case you need to diagnose a problem. Two USB 2.0, so that are power four ports. There we have another fan uh, connector. Two RGB connectors, masked off air as I said before, audio connectors, audio caps. Going around to the IO audio, uh, we've got the USB 3.1 Gen 2, so that's one type A, one type C, six USB 3.0s, 3.1 Gen 1s if you must. HDMI is unusual in that. Boards that have uh, support for APUs, because obviously socket AM4 is all the same, uh, will typically have more than one graphics output. Uh, I saw recently DVI, um, VGA surprisingly, and also HDMI. Display port thin on the ground. Uh, so boards that then support purely CPUs or are only going to be likely to be used for CPUs, and realistically that includes this, typically have no graphics outputs. But here we have an HDMI. It's good to see it takes up minimal space. Why not? Uh, so it is at least multi-purpose. Uh, BIOS reset, uh, th there's the uh, 246 USB 3.0s, PS2, and then we have uh, aerial connection points, antenna connection points for the ATA211 AC Wi-Fi. Overall, it's a sound looking piece of work, follows the Tai Chi ethos, uh, nothing massively unexpected. Uh, when you look at the spec, you think, well, there's space there, could have done more with that. Uh, similarly, the uh, 8211AC is not Wave 2. There's Bluetooth uh, 4 inside the board rather than Bluetooth 5. But everything's present and correct. There's no actual problems. Nothing's jumping off at me going, oh, that's not good. Uh, overall, happy. But we uh, should take a closer look at the hardware. Time for some disjointed hands. Uh, here we have the M.2 cover I've removed there from the primary slot. The uh, secondary is uh, uncovered. Uh, it's aluminium, it's very thin. It cosmetically fits in with the styling of the Tai Chi as a thermal pad, it has protective plastic. Nothing too surprising. Uh, there is the shroud that sits over the IO like so. Purely plastic, it's got that RGB connector that goes there. Uh, but apart from that, not a lot to say about it. And here we have the VRM heatsink, which sits like thus. Uh, so aluminium, the black-headed screws there are holding on this uh, plastic uh, cosmetic parts. 
the two aluminium heat sinks are linked by that heat pipe and you've got thermal pads as you'd expect. In section you can see there is some thinning but nothing too special so better than some really blocky heat sinks that we've seen on uh, X299 boards uh, not as thinned as for example Gigabyte Aorus boards we've seen in recent times again cosmetically it fits in with the styling. And here we have a puzzle. The 16 power phases, which are uh, Texas Instruments power phases, and the description of the board ASRock spec says 16 power phases. So you look at them and you go, well, okie dokie. Typically there'd be, say, uh, 14 for the uh, V-Core and two for the SOC. Conceivably 12 for the V-Core and four for the SOC, but don't you see why you do that? So you grab a multimeter in continuity mode, and you simply go, dodgy connection. There we go. Which actually suggests that it's 16 power phases that are all working in unison, therefore 16 for the uh, V-Core, which uh, would be just weird. That is the uh, VRM controller right there. Uh, we've got over here the power regulation for the memory as a wholly separate thing. And we've flipped the board and we can clearly see there's a doubling scheme going on. So eight components, so logically that's controlling uh, the uh, 16 VRMs as eight pairs. So, a repeat of what I had on the front, uh, which would suggest that the 16 are working in unison. I don't get that, that makes no sense to me. I don't see any other SOC hardware, so I don't know quite what to say about that. Um, with the board flipped back, but so if you have any views on the VRM arrangement, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'm happy to accept a more expert view on this because clearly I'm missing something there. Uh, we've got the 12K uh, Japanese Nishigong caps, that's all lovely, that's one of the features that uh, ASRock refers to because cosmetic, they look good, they uh, aid longevity, that's all fine. Uh, this is clearly the same PCB as the uh, Tai Chi Ultimate because there we clearly have the masked area for the uh, Quantia 10 gigabit Ethernet. Down here we clearly have the masked area for the power and reset buttons. Same PCB, we're minus a handful of components. I cannot think it would have cost them a whole lot to keep those buttons. The 10 gigabit, yeah, fair enough. Why they took those off, I, I really don't get it. Other than that, a perfectly respectable looking piece of hardware. Nothing particularly earth shaking, but it does a job. Okay, BIOS time. I've got the latest P1.30 BIOS. Here we have the info screen. Go across to OC Tweaker. And if we change the overclock mode to manual, I'll leave the front side bus well alone. Change CPU uh, frequency voltage to manual. Then we have CPU frequency. So if we go for 42504 and a quarter gigahertz, because I know that works. Uh, CPU voltage 1.4. SMT, we want to leave that enabled. We want threading enabled. Uh, XMP profile. Now you will note there that the uh, memory is now at 3333. The Sniper X memory is actually 3400, so XMP in this board is incorrect. I've used the same memory and I, I did when I was uh, doing the launch reviews of Ryzen 7, and uh, the gigabytes I was using at the time had no trouble at all with 3400, so clearly there's a bit of a snag here. And if we continue going down to voltage configuration, So uh, stable mode or OC mode essentially means if you want to uh, add to the range of voltages, I don't particularly, 1.4 is gonna be more than enough for me. CPU uh, voltage fixed, go down 1.4, which will immediately go red. If I um, use the minus key to come down one from that, uh, just under 1.4 is absolutely fine. So 1.4 is the start of the red. Load line calibration, 
Let's pick level two, just raise it up a tad. We'll leave the uh, uh, SOC voltage on uh, auto. However, we'll raise load line calibration to two. And that's it. F10 to save, come out. And now we're gonna boot uh, into Windows 10 at 4.25 gigahertz all core. Here we are now in Windows. And if we go to CPU monitor, And there we have it, uh, 4.25 gigahertz, uh, no problems whatsoever. The configuration of our test system is the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X running at 4.25 gigahertz. We've got a fractal design Celsius S24 liquid cooler, that's a 240mm as you can see. 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Sniper X DDDR4 3400MHz memory, albeit running at 3333. EVGA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. The uh, SSD is from SK Hynix and the power supply is by Seasonic and is Prime Titanium 1000 Watt. I've used the ASRock RGB software to enable a random pattern across the board which looks perfectly okay. I mean I would personally say it clashes hugely with the Tai Chi sort of understated thing but what the heck if you want lights there's your lights. So we're now running at 4.25 gigahertz rather than a shade under 4 gigahertz. If I run Cinebench and uh, stop clocks that returned a score of just over 1800, 1806 I think it was. Storming along, eight core, 16 threads, four and a quarter gigahertz. Obviously highly threaded, probably the best case scenario for a processor such as Ryzen 7. And it's a nice quick test, which of course is why we use it. And the result comes in at 1922, so 100 marks. However, when I was testing in games, 3D Mark and such like, uh, the overclock didn't make a blind bit of difference. In fact, in some instances, it lost frames. Uh, when I tried running at 4.3 gigahertz in Blender, the uh, system just locked solid, which is what I expected. This processor appears to be good, good for four and a quarter gigahertz, and that's its limit. This processor overclocked in highly threaded software gives an extra 5%. If you want that, fine. If not, well, I entirely understand. Uh, the power draw goes up, the temperatures go up, albeit they're still well within safety limits. Nonetheless, the benefit is next to nothing. It it really strikes me the best thing you can do with Ryzen 2nd Gen is just to leave Precision Boost 2 to do its thing, which I'm sure will gladden AMD's heart no end. Uh, so overclocking for this gen of processor on X470 strikes me at the moment as being pretty much pointless. Uh, I said much the same when uh, the Raven Ridge APUs came out, just let them do their thing. Seems to work perfectly well. This is more of the same. You obviously can't tweak the graphics, there ain't no graphics to tweak. So the processor as it comes, the best thing you can do to get the most from Ryzen 7 second gen is find highly threaded software. If your games aren't highly threaded, the processor isn't really that great. Uh, for things like Blender, Cinebench and such like Premiere, it does a good job. But as for overclocking, really not worth a candle. And therefore, it follows the overclocking aspect of the motherboard. Hmm, what's the point? And that's the thing. So if we say that this X470 motherboard and all X470 motherboards, uh, the overclocking minute is a total waste of time unless you fancy having a play, it makes you wonder about some of the hardware. The dual CPU power connectors at the top of the board, what's the point? What is the point? They just aren't necessary. Now, if, as has been rumoured, there's another Ryzen 7 coming along, or Ryzen 9 or whatever coming along at some point, that's more than eight cores, and I have no idea, and it won't be anytime soon, then, yeah, okay, I can see that this board might in the future support a Ryzen that will use the power, but I have my doubts. I certainly have no knowledge about that. Uh, and it's a similar thing with those that huge number of 16 uh, power phases on the VRMs. For why? I mean, I couldn't even figure out what they all did, but for why? And we go around, headers and connectors are perfectly decent. There's lots of them, loads of USB. It's not quite at the cutting edge of some of the other boards we've seen, but it does a perfectly sound job. The Wi-Fi is okay, the Bluetooth is okay. Uh, you've got two M.2s rather than three. It's all kind of either okay or good, but not brilliant across the piece. That's the thing. The features are good without being earth shaking. And the price is also perfectly acceptable. So overall, it's a perfectly solid and sound board that reinforces my personal feeling, which is that overclocking the latest Ryzen's 
fairly futile job. But if you fancy having some fun, go ahead, fill your boots. This motherboard is a perfectly decent motherboard. I have had no problems with it, albeit that thing of the XMP, uh, misreading my 3400 megahertz memory and going at 3333, yeah. Mm. That's the only thing. Uh, beyond that, it's absolutely solid and does a decent job. I don't much care for the RGB lighting and such like. If I wanted that, I'd get a more bling motherboard rather than the Tai Chi in the first place. Uh, it strikes me as, you know, but I guess Azrock's just you know, trying to pile on all the features they can. The lack of 10 gigabit on this budget-ish model is a bit of a shame, but entirely understandable. Beyond that, it's fine. If you buy this board, you'll be happy. I'm just not entirely sure why you'd want to rush out and get it. There's no killer feature. Shame that. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you're more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button and you'll be notified of more videos as they become live on our channel. I'm Neil Water for Kit Guru. This is the ASRock X470 Tai Chi.